When I first read The Last Messiah, I thought it was an interesting title um, by Petra Vessel Sopfe, <laughs> Zapfe, as we call him in the Anglosphere, um, because it can be read two ways, as many of these things can. Um, you look for a clue in the title, The Last Messiah, The Messiah. Uh, the last person who is going to attempt to save us from anything, the last Messiah who is going to attempt to bring the ideal down to earth. It's going to bring the kingdom of heaven. That's what the Messiah does, right? The kingdom of God down to earth. Um, in what form will this new heaven take? Non-existence. Okay, well, that is the heaven that the Messiah um, has decided to announce or bring about or promote or whatever. Um, okay. Uh, interesting. There's no real explanation as to why this is a heaven, um, but I think that it can be inferred simply, again, from the habit of maintaining Judeo-Christian ethics and abandoning God. That's what happens when you uh, cleave to the idea of perfection or of some sort of ideal, or I guess you'd call it a true world theory or two world theory, um, that somewhere is either a permanently better place than this or a perfect place, depending on how you value uh, or how you evaluate um, what's what, what's perfection, and what is better, and what is value in and of itself, what is goodness. <clears throat> Reminded of Ligotti's story, The White Tower. Again, the same, or sorry, heh, The Red Tower. Same thing, there's this big tower producing nothing of any use, just a pile of grotesqueries. Um, and um, it's sitting on a vast empty, desolate plain of nothingness. Uh, the Red Tower is an abomination in the perfection of nothingness. Um, or an abomination of existence, I guess, or life, because a lot of the things produced in the Red Tower, which is essentially a factory, uh, are life things, usually deformed, but parodies of life. Life is an abomination. <clears throat> in other words, um, goodness is still to be sought in uh, the bleak emptiness surrounding the Red Tower. That's perfection. The um, bit of existence or the existence of life is the abomination which is the Red Tower. All right. You can just throw in all these assertions that life is an abomination, but again, you can't get from there to the point where life shouldn't be other than what it is. The is ought thing. It's so basic. Um, I think that Zopfe fell down, again, because he's stuck halfway between Christianity and atheism, I think. Um, but that's okay, because a lot of people accuse me of that, too. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Getting to our friend... Um, Mr. Choran. I'm still going through the um, short history of decay. I like it. Um, but I found something that, again, I think may be something of a flaw at the very heart of Choran's philosophy. Um, or not so much a flaw, but something that I see as an objection to it. I can still see how one can still subscribe to his philosophy, but you'd have to you have to make a fundamental effort of the will to do so. You'd have to say, I like what he has to say. That I can understand. I can understand somebody saying, Charan's worldview meshes perfectly with my own. He's a man after my own heart type thing. Hey, nothing wrong with that. But again, it's based on preference. It's based on personal choice, personal perspective. Theory of Goodness by uh, Emil Charan from... Um, Brief History of Decay. Since for you there is no ultimate criterion, nor irrevocable principle, and no God, what keeps you from committing any and every crime? Interesting, eh? The immediate alluding to 
harm avoidance, as though this is some sort of unending, unquestionable ideal, an axiom that is not an axiom, it's a fact. Well, I find myself as much, e uh, or, sorry, I find in myself as much evil as in anyone, evil. <laughs> but detesting action, mother of all the vices, I am the cause of no one's suffering. Lucky me, or not even so much lucky me, but aren't I a wonderful person? <laughs> uh, sound familiar? Harmless, without greed and without enough energy or indecency to affront others. Good for you. <laughs> um, I leave this world as I found it. To take revenge presupposes constant vigilance and a systematic mind, a costly continuity, whereas the indifference of forgiveness and contempt renders the hours pleasantly empty. All ethics represent a danger for goodness. Goodness. Only negligence rescues it. In other words, goodness is an ideal to be pursued. Having chosen the phlegm of the imbecile and the apathy of the angel, I have excluded myself from actions, and since goodness is incompatible with life, I have decomposed myself in order to be good. <clears throat> good for you, literally, and I mean that. If you seek goodness, you will be sought by its opposite. <laughs> um, if all you seek is the good, the bad will thwart you at every turn. Hmm. Um, you know, if you want to seek the evil, Watch what the good has to say about that. Um, <clears throat> I think that the problem here is pretty obvious, and it you know goes to Nietzsche's point, Nietzsche's book really, beyond good and evil. Um, the is the is ought thing writ large, um, and the seed of malignant egoism that is at the heart of everything that um, decides to pursue the good. Why do I wish to set myself as a better man than others? <laughs> Why would I want to do that? Why do I do good? I remember a conversation that I had once with a fellow when I was taking a religious course in university. I was just as much of a jerk then as I am now, by the way. He wanted to be a missionary, and I was playing the devil's advocate with him, saying, what are your motives for being a missionary? Well, I want to help people. Why do you want to help people? Because it's it's God commands us to do it. And I said, that's nice. That's what you tell yourself. Um, are you sure it's not ego? <laughs> and I played that game with him, and I messed the fellow up a bit, but I'm sure he's overcome it by now. Hopefully he's not a skid row wino or something like this because of a 15-minute conversation I had with him. Um, while he, oddly enough, was smoking a cigarette in the hallway of the university. This being the 80s, it wasn't considered strange for a religious person to be smoking cigarettes, even a missionary. <laughs> <clears throat> so, doing good. Good for you. Good for me. I'm such a great guy. And what does that mean when I'm such a great guy? You're a bastard. That's what that means. That's good and evil for you. And again, that's why any philosophy that... Um, deals in elevating the good and fighting the bad, and that's precisely what Jaron has said here. I find it difficult to read this any other way. Perhaps someone can disabuse me of the, I won't say hostile, but pr potentially erroneous reading that I've uh, made of this passage. Looks as though somebody is saying, I wish to be good. Uh, reminds me of you know, Zappi's prescription and Ligotti's prescription. Um, being good trumps existence itself. Off you go. That sounds like Christian martyrdom all over again. And again, this, this kind of thing crops its head up. Um, the enormous pleasure of being torn to pieces by the lions in the amphitheater. The pleasure is, of course, I'm being eviscerated by these starving beasts but I'm better than all you scumbags watching it happen to me. 
Who is the sadist in that dynamic? Who's the sadist when they're sitting there singing these wonderful songs about how Jesus will save them while the lions are coming out to tear them to pieces? The crowd is baying for their blood. Actually, um, in ancient Rome, one of the strangest things was um, a lot of the local magistrates, when it was time to execute Christians, declined to throw them to the lions because they tended to meet their death bravely. Um, or it did happen that Christians would meet their death bravely, and this would actually make them look good in the eyes of the mob. Love the Romans or hate them, they admired courage. If you died courageously, you were a hero in their eyes. You didn't want to do that with a bunch of subversive Christians. <clears throat> so you're sitting there waiting for the lions to tear you to pieces. I'm better than you bastards, you sadistic jerks up there in the audience. You are, are you? <laughs> <laughs>